Are you looking to make your new Abyss pump work with your Apex by Neptune Systems? Hello, this is Carlos from CoralView welcoming you back to another episode of CVTV. In a previous video, we covered the basic fundamentals and the new features of the Abyss pumps. In this video, we will concentrate on connecting your Abyss pump to a third-party controller by using an available 0 to 10 volt port. This makes the Abyss pumps very versatile and almost universally compatible with most system controllers like the Apex by Neptune Systems or the Reef Angel. I will show you how to program your Apex controller to take advantage of the advanced controllability of the Abyss water pumps. Now, this video will only cover the configuration and programming of your Abyss pump with an Apex controller from Neptune Systems. It assumes that you already have a fully configured and working Apex controller as well as a free variable speed port. You should be familiar with the creation of virtual and regular outputs. If you have not configured your Apex controller, a good place to start is Neptune Systems website. They have an amazing website full of support articles, videos, as well as a support forum with a thriving community of experienced staff and fellow Apex users. You can visit them at www.neptunesystems.com. Before we proceed with the video, here's a list of things that we need. An Abyss pump. For the purposes of this video, we will be using an Abyss A100, but the controller is the same for all sizes. An Abyss to Apex connection module. This module is required to connect your Abyss pump to your Apex controller. If you do not have one, please visit your favorite online retailer and purchase one. You can also purchase one directly from CoralView.com. An Apex controller by Neptune Systems with the latest firmware version installed. To connect your Abyss pump to the system controller, you will need to plug one end of a connection cable into the 3.5 millimeter jack on the side of the Abyss to Apex module and the opposite end with the Ethernet jack into an available 0 to 10 volt port on your existing system controller. Now, connect one end of the 9-pin cable to the master plug on your Abyss controller and the other end to the Abyss to Apex module. That is it! No need to make any changes to the controller. The Abyss controller will automatically recognize that it is connected to the Abyss to Apex module and await commands from the Apex. Now that we have the pump and controller connected to our Neptune Systems Apex, let's get started with Abyss Pumps Advanced Controlling. This is the Neptune Systems Apex Fusion interface. If you do not know how to access it, we recommend that you head over to NeptuneSystems.com. They have a community forum that is monitored by their staff as well as fellow Apex users always happy to help. Before we start to configure our pump, we need to figure out which output our pump is connected to. The variable speed output on our Apex can control two pumps at the same time. To start, Make note of which variable speed port we connected the cable to. If we connected the cable to variable speed port 1 and 2, then we know our pump is going to be controlled by either variable speed output 1 or output 2. With that in mind, we must first turn both outputs off by moving the slider to the off position. Now click on the gear icon to the right of the variable speed output 1 name. This will open the output configuration page. Set control type to advance, clear the configuration window, and then type set 50. Save your changes by clicking on the orange cloud icon located on the upper right hand and repeat the same for variable speed output 2. Now, turn on your Abyss Pumps controller. On your Apex Fusion interface, go back to the dashboard by clicking on the first icon on the upper left and manually turn variable speed output 1 on. If the Abyss pump does not respond, then turn variable speed output 1 off and now turn variable speed output 2 on. Make note of which output turns your pump on as that will be the output we will be working with. For this video, our Abyss A100 is running on variable speed output 1. Let's go ahead and turn the output off. Now, once again, click on the gear icon to the right of the output's name to access the output configuration page. Let's go ahead and rename this output Abyss-A100. Don't forget to save your changes. The next step is to figure out the pump's minimum head flow. 
Minimum head flow is the flow speed just above the point where the down pressure from the water in the plumbing is equal to the pressure of the pump pushing water upwards. Basically, it is a point where water and the plumbing does not go up or down, but instead stays at the same level even when the pump is running. The minimum head flow is different for every system as it's based on each individual setup. The total length of the plumbing, the number of corners or splits, all affect the total flow output of the pump. On the output configuration page, click on the wand located on the upper left corner. It is the third icon from the left. This is the advanced configuration wizard. Since this output has never been configured before, Apex loads up a sample program. In this case, we're going to delete all time points except for the first. You delete the points by clicking on the orange gear icon to the left of the point and then select Remove Point. Go ahead and save your changes. As you can see, the pump should now be on and running at 10% intensity. In order to find the minimum head flow point, we need to slowly raise the point's intensity and keep a close eye on the return output inside our tanks. As soon as we see water coming out of the pipe, we make note of that intensity. That intensity is our minimum head flow. A good place to start would be about 50%. Click and hold a single point on the graph and slide it up to 50%. Then save your changes. If water is coming out of the return pipe, then we need to lower the intensity a little bit. Click and hold the point and drag it down to 40%. Save your changes and then look at the output pipe. If water continues to flow out, then proceed to lowering the intensity a little more. If water stopped flowing out, then we know that 40% is below the minimum head flow. This means that 50% is our minimum head flow and we must remember that all flow patterns for this pump should never be configured lower than 50% intensity. With that in mind, we can now proceed to program our pump. Using the same simple graph, we can go ahead and add more points to create different flow patterns during the day. To add more points, just click on the orange icon next to the point and select Add Point. In this video, we're going to create a four-point schedule. Since we're using the Abyss A100 as a return pump, we're going to have one constant intensity during the day and then slow the pump down a little bit at night. Click and hold the dot of the first point. Now drag that dot to the right until we reach 0700 hours with an intensity of 60%. If you're having a hard time reaching that 7 o'clock mark, you can always click on the orange gear and then select Adjust Point. Select 0700 and then enter power of 60. Let's go ahead and add a second point at 0800 hours with an intensity of 80%. Create a third point for 2200 hours with an intensity of 80% and finally create one last point for 2300 hours and an intensity of 60%. Don't forget to save all your changes. Now we have a return pump that runs an increased intensity during the day and then at night it slows down a little bit to give our critters a little break. Well, we hope this video was helpful and you got a good understanding on how to connect your new Abyss pump to your system controller. Please use the information you learned as a base or starting point and feel free to experiment more. Your pump is now able to do things that it could not do before, so have fun with it. The sky's the limit. If you would like to learn more about the Abyss flow pumps, including detailed specs, beautiful high quality pictures and replacement parts, head on over to CoralView.com. If you have any questions or issues with the product, don't hesitate to visit our support portal at CoralView.com forward slash support. Our friendly support reps are eager to help you with any questions or issues you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest product reviews and tutorial videos. To subscribe, just click on the small icon right there. Yes, right here, the little one right there. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralViewAquariumProducts.